do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we are going to study about the kelvin double bridge method which is used for the measurement of low resistances low resistances means those resistances which are having the value from 0 ohm to 1 ohm so let us start with our topic The Kelvin's double bridge method, it is the most popular method which is used for measuring the low resistances very accurately. This bridge that is Kelvin double bridge, it is a modification of the Wheatstone bridge. Wheatstone bridge, we are very much aware about it that this Wheatstone bridge, it consists of four arms and in the four arms we have four resistances and these the bridge that is Wheatstone bridge it is said to be balanced when the ratio of the resistances in one arm is equal to the ratio of the resistances in the other arm. So if we draw the circuit for the Wheatstone bridge it will be like These are the four ratio arm A, B, C, D. Okay, we have the four resistances P, Q, R, N, S. Okay, so this Wheatstone bridge is balanced. That is the galvanometer. It will show the null deflection. That means that will be zero when no current is flowing through this arm B, D. And that will happen when P by Q is equals to R by S. Okay, so this is the Wheatstone bridge. Now, Kelvin double bridge, it is a modification of the Wheatstone bridge because Wheatstone bridge, it can measure the resistances which are from few ohms to several mega ohms. But if we want to measure the uh, resistances which are very low, that is under one ohm value, then we will use the Kelvin double bridge. And for that, we have to do some modifications in this Wheatstone bridge. Bridge. So before starting with the Kelvin double bridge, let us see the principle due to which we have to use this Kelvin double bridge method. Okay. Now for that, suppose that uh, this P, Q, these are the known resistances in the Wheatstone bridge. R is the unknown resistance and S is the standard resistance. Now we are calculating this unknown resistance R by this formula. That is P by Q into S. So we can use this uh, Wheatstone bridge also for the measurement of resistance. But in that case, uh, when we are implementing this Wheatstone bridge in the laboratory, then P, Q resistances, all these resistances are connected to each other through the connecting leads. Okay, so this unknown resistance, it is connected to the standard resistance through the connecting leads and that connecting lead can, will also have some resistance. So if we want to measure the resistance of that connecting lead, we can use the Kelvin double bridge because the resistance of connecting lead will be very small. Okay, so here in this modification what we are doing in between r and s we are considering a connecting lead and we want to measure the resistance of that connecting lead so let's draw the circuit here
okay so this modification we have done from the wheatstone bridge in the kelvin double bridge now in this kelvin bridge what we see that here we are having a connecting lead which is connecting the unknown resistance r to the standard resistance now let us suppose that this connecting lead is having a resistance value which is r okay so r is the resistance of this connecting lead now this galvanometer it can be connected to the point m also and to the point n also when this galvanometer is connected at point m then this resistance of the connecting lead is added to the standard resistance and when this galvanometer is connected to point n then this resistance r of the connecting lead is added to the unknown resistance so there are two connections for the galvanometer either at point m or either at point n so when the connection is at point m then the resistance of the connecting lead that is a small r it is added to the standard resistance so s will become s plus r okay so in the ratio of what we have studied in the wheatstone bridge that is r equals to p by q s so this r will be equal to p upon q and this s is replaced by s plus r okay so here we will get the value of the unknown resistance as greater than the actual value now when the galvanometer is connected at point n then this uh, resistance of the connecting lead is added to the unknown resistance so r will become r plus small r so here again the ratio will become r plus small r equals to p by q s okay so in both the cases if you will see the value of the resistance which we are getting it is not the true value of the resistance at point m the value will be lower than the actual value and at point n the value will be greater than the actual value okay so here in the case of point m we are getting low result and in at point n we are getting high result okay so this connecting lead it is having an effect on those values now here suppose that instead of making the galvanometer connections at point m and n we are making the galvanometer connection at a point d which is intermediate between point m and n such that the resistance that is r the resistance of the connecting lead it is divided into two parts r1 and r2 such that the ratio of r1 upon r2 is equal to the ratio of p by q so we are making the connection of the galvanometer g at an intermediate point d which is dividing the resistance of the connecting lead into two parts r1 and r2 such that the ratio of r1 and r2 is equal to the ratio of p by q okay so r is divided into r1 and r2 r1 upon r2 is equal to p upon q so when the connection of the galvanometer it is made at point d such that uh, we are having this ratio then no error will occur in the measurement means this uh, low result and high result conditions they will be eliminated so how let's see now when the connection is at point d then in this ratio p upon q equals to r by s in r we are adding this resistance r1 and in this standard resistance s we are adding this small resistance r2 so this ratio will be changed that is p upon q equals to r by s that will be changed 
in r we are adding small r1 and p upon q here in s we are adding the resistance r2 but we know that this r1 upon r2 is equal to p by q okay so from this formula we can get the value of r1 upon r1 plus r2 it will be equal to p upon p plus q what we have done we have r1 upon r2 plus 1 and p upon q plus 1 we are adding 1 on both the sides we will get r1 plus r2 upon r2 equals to p upon q p plus q upon q so from this if we reverse this uh, expression we will get r2 upon r1 plus r2 equals to q upon p plus q similarly if we take the reverse ratio that is r2 upon r1 equals to q by p and then adding 1 and 1 we will get the ratio r1 upon r1 plus r2 equals to p upon p plus q so we are getting these two ratios from this expression so r1 upon r1 plus r2 equals to p upon p plus q so from this expression we will get the value of r1 as p upon p plus q into r1 plus r2 and we know that r1 plus r2 it is equal to the complete resistance of the connecting lead r1 plus r2 is equal to r okay so here we can replace this r1 plus r2 by r so this is the value of r1 now from this expression that is r2 upon r1 plus r2 equals to q upon p plus q we will get the value of r2 as q upon p plus q multiplied with r1 plus r2 again we are getting r2 as q upon p plus q r1 plus r2 is what again r so this is the value of r2 so from this expression r1 upon r2 equals to p by q we can get the value of r1 also and we can get the value of r2 also now after getting these two values let's put this value in this expression r plus small r1 equals to p by q s plus r2 so we will get r plus small r1 is what p upon p plus q r And here we have P upon Q S plus R2 is what? This value Q upon P plus Q into R. Now when we solve this what we will get? P upon P plus Q into R. And here if we multiply this Q and Q will be cancelled. Again we are going to get P upon P plus Q into R. So that will be cancelled. Q and Q are cancelled. Again we are getting PR upon P plus Q. Here also PR upon P plus Q. So they will be cancelled. So we are getting the last expression as R equals to P upon Q into S. So from this expression we can conclude that if we are making the galvanometer connections in the bridge at a point d such that the ratio of r1 upon r2 is equals to p upon q then the connection or the resistance of this connecting lead will have no effect on the circuit okay because we are at last in the last we are getting the same expression as that we are getting in the wheatstone bridge but practically this type of connection is impossible because we are we are not able to get this point d correctly such that the ratio is equal so 
instead of uh, doing this or searching for this intermediate point D, we are making a modification in this bridge, in this Beechstone bridge and that modification is called the Kelvin double bridge. So in Kelvin double bridge, there is a simple modification. Instead of this connecting lead, we are using a another set of ratio arms that is instead of p by q we are also using another set which is a small p by q such that the this resistance we can measure easily okay such that the ratio of this p upon q and the ratio of that small p upon q that is equal okay so let us study the kelvin double bridge method so because uh, through this expression you get to know that why we are doing the modification in Wheatstone bridge what what is the requirement for this modification now in the Kelvin double bridge uh, we are having a second set of ratio arms so that is why its name is double bridge okay And uh, in this Kelvin is the name of the scientist who developed this bridge and double bridge because here we are having a second set of ratio arms. So if we see the construction of this bridge, it will have two sets. First set of ratio arm will be P upon Q. P and Q and second set of ratio arm will be small p and small q okay And the galvanometer, it is connected between the two arms that is P upon Q and small p upon Q. Let's see the circuit for this Kelvin double bridge. So this is the circuit diagram for the Kelvin double bridge. In this bridge you can see there are two ratio arms. One set of ratio arm is P upon Q and the other set of ratio arm is small p upon small q. And in between these two arms the galvanometer is connected. Now R is the unknown resistance which we uh, that is the unknown resistance and S is the standard resistance. So P, Q, R and S are just like the Wheatstone bridge. Now in the modification we studied that we are connecting the galvanometer at an intermediate point such that P upon Q is equals to uh, capital P upon Q. The ratio is same. Now here is small r it is the resistance of the connecting lead which is connecting this unknown resistance with the standard resistance and here we know the value of r and we know want to calculate the value of this connecting lead okay so this is the kelvin double bridge now the working principle for this uh, 
bridge is just like same as the Wheatstone bridge. We want to find a point where the galvanometer gives us a null deflection. So in the Wheatstone bridge, when we studied that the bridge will be balanced when the galvanometer gives us no deflection. When the galvanometer gives us no deflection, when there is no current flowing through the galvanometer, that means the voltage drop across uh, the point EAB, AB is equal to the voltage drop across EAMB. Okay, then only the galvanometer will give us null deflection. So we are going to equate the voltage drop across AB points that is EAB and the voltage drop across EAMB. Okay, so EAB should be equal to EAMB. Then only this galvanometer will give us the null deflection and the ratio of small p by q will be equal to capital P by q. Now let's derive, get the derivation for this Kelvin double bridge. Now in the Kelvin double bridge here you can see we are uh, just simplifying this part. Okay, if we draw a simple circuit for this part, then across EA uh, means across the point A and C, what is the equivalent resistance? Okay, this R will be connected to P and Q. P and Q are in series with each other. Then in parallel to that, we are having this resistance R that is resistance of the connecting lead. And then we are having the standard resistance. So if we draw the diagram for the resistance in between the point A and C, it will be like So this is point A, this is point C. In between A and M, we are having the resistance R. So this is R, this is point M. Between M and N, we are having P and Q, which are in series. And in parallel, we are having R. So this is P, this is Q, this is R. This is the point N. And this was the middle point D. So when the galvanometer is showing null deflection, it means this uh, no current is flowing through this. So this uh, circuit or this line can be connected as a short circuit line. Okay. So here we are having the point D. Then N is there. And after that, we are having the standard resistance N and then the C point. So this is the resistance in between. Now, if we calculate the voltage drop that because we practically what we have to find EAB equals to EAMD. We know this thing. Now, we have to calculate the value of this EAB and we want to find out the expression for the resistance. Now, EAB is equal to P upon P plus Q into EAC. EAB will be equals to P upon P plus Q and the total voltage drop that is EAC because when we want to find out the voltage drop across one arm what we have to do total voltage divided by the resistance that is P upon the total resistance is P plus Q across the points EAC we want to find out so total voltage is what EAC then we have to give the resistance that is resistance across the point is P in divided by the total resistance P and Q are in series with each other so we have written the expression for EAB.
okay now we have to find out eac so eac is what this is the voltage drop across this point so what we will do complete voltage divided by the resistance or we can say v is equals to ir so we know the value of the current value of the current is i and we can write the equivalent resistance then we can get eac so e a c will be equal to i that is a current into the equivalent resistance between the point a c so what is the equivalent resistance r plus s plus this parallel combination so r plus s plus p plus q into r upon p plus q plus r because p plus q they are in series with each other and then it is in parallel with the resistance r so we will get the resistance p plus q into r upon p plus q plus r and r and s are in series with each other so this is the equivalent resistance between the point a and c and this is the total current now for in this value we are uh, putting the value of this eac in this expression for eab p upon p plus q into this i and then this expression r plus s plus so this is the voltage drop across the points e a, uh, a and b so in this figure if we see a b we have calculated this voltage drop now this voltage drop will be equal to the voltage drop across a m d then only the galvanometer will show the null deflection okay so now we will calculate e a m d now eamd will be equal to the current into the equivalent resistance so current will be the i and equivalent resistance will be r plus p upon p plus q and then the that is uh, we are going to add this resistance the voltage drop across this resistance plus the md that is eamd will be equal to eam plus emd okay so this is the i into r okay same current is flowing through this resistance so p upon the p plus q that will be the resistance and then multiplied with the equivalent resistance okay so eamd will be equal to i r plus p upon p plus q so eamd we have divided it we have added two parts in it eam plus emd eam is the voltage drop across the resistance r so i multiplied with r we have written it here i we have taken as common so i into r will be eam then emd emd will be what the voltage drop across this uh, p resistance so what we calculate we know the total voltage drop okay that means the current into the equivalent resistance we are writing so equivalent resistance is what p upon p plus q and this is the equivalent resistance so we have written these two uh, we have combined these two voltages and this is the ea md now let's simplify this p plus q p plus q they will be cancelled out so ea md is equal to i r plus p r upon p plus q plus 
So this what we have obtained EAMD. We have already obtained EAB. Now what the Wheatstone Bridge principle says that this galvanometer deflection will be null when the voltage drops across the two arms is equal. That is EAB is equal to EAMD. So we have the values of both the voltages so we are going to equate them. So we will put the values of EAB and EAMD and then going to equate it. EAB is equal to from this formula we can get its value. We will write it here P upon P plus Q into I R plus S plus This is the value of EAB. We are going to equate with EAMD. Now in these two equations we have this I as common. So we are going to cancel it out. So we are left with P upon P plus Q and this expression and on the right hand side we are left with R plus PR upon P plus Q plus R. Let us simplify this. Now on both sides we have the expression for this R. Okay. So what we will do. We are going to cross multiply this. P upon P plus Q. We will send it on the right hand side. So when we will send it on right hand side it will become P plus Q upon P. Okay. Then multiply it inside the bracket what we will get R into P plus Q upon P. So this is the expression for R and here we are having R also. So we are going to bring that on the left hand side. First write it in some simplified form. We will multiply it inside. So what we will get? P plus Q upon P plus this PR upon P plus Q plus R into P plus Q upon P. We have multiplied it inside the bracket. Now this is the expression for R and this is also the expression for R. So we will bring the expressions in terms of R or the coefficients of R on the left hand side and all the other terms on the right hand side. Here if we take R as common so 1 is left then minus this P plus Q upon P we are bringing it on the left hand side so plus will become minus on this side and we are left with P plus Q upon P. So these are the terms which are having R in them. Then all the terms on the right hand side so here we will have This S when we, it come on the right hand side it will become minus. So minus S minus okay now let's further simplify it when we do this subtraction if we take LCM then P minus P plus uh, minus Q upon P it will be P as an LCM, P minus P minus Q 
this will be like this so p and p will be cancelled and we are left with r minus q upon p now here if we do the subtraction we have p upon p plus q plus r okay now if we take it as common like from this and this term we can take p uh, r upon p plus q plus r as common here we are having p plus q upon p and here if we take uh, if we multiply this this is minus pr upon p plus q plus r and minus qr upon p plus q plus r so we can take a uh, common so here we are left with minus 1 and what the terms we are left with minus s and minus of qr upon p plus q plus r what we have done we have multiplied this r inside so we will get minus pr and minus qr so minus pr and this is also pr upon p plus q plus r we have taken common here so we are p plus q upon p and here minus 1 is left again we are having minus qr so we have written as it is okay now let's do subtraction here also so this will be p plus q minus p upon p again p and p will be cancelled we will are left with only q upon p so let's simplify it further we are having r into minus q upon p equals to p r upon p plus q plus r and inside we are left with q upon p minus s minus qr upon p plus q plus r now if we take minus sign common from both the sides then we will get here we will have minus sign this will become minus this will become plus and plus okay so minus and minus signs they will be cancelled out okay and then q upon p we are going to bring it on the right hand side so we will get r equal to this become minus minus pr upon p plus q plus r here we are having q by p when we are bringing this on right hand side it will become p upon q so p upon q and q upon p they will be cancelled next term we are having this will become plus so plus this p upon q and then this s this also become plus sign so plus qr upon p plus q plus r and multiplying this with p by q so what we have done we have taken the minus sign common so minus minus will be cancelled on the left hand side on the right hand side and this q upon p we have bring it on the right hand side so it will become p by q so p by q p by q p by q multiplying it with all the three terms in this term it will be cancelled with this q by p ratio here we are having p by q in this term also we have p by q now again further simplify it if we see here we are having minus pr and here we are having qr so we can take common from these two terms okay so taking common we will get this is as it is p upon q into s from these two terms we will have plus multiply it inside p q r upon q p plus q plus r writing this on this side minus pr upon p plus q plus r now let's take common we are taking qr as common So from the first term we are left with capital P upon Q and from the second term because it is not having Q here we have taken Q common so we have to divide it with Q. So we will get P upon Q. Okay. 
so this is the expression or this is the final expression which we are getting for the kelvin double bridge this expression we have got when we have equated the two voltages eab and eam d here we have equated the two voltages eab is equal to eam d individually we have got both the values and then we equated them and then simplified it to get this expression now in this expression if you compare it with the expression for the wheatstone bridge for wheatstone bridge we have r equals to p upon q into s so this is present but this second term is the additional term in the kelvin double bridge now if the value of the p upon q is equal to the ratio of small p upon q which is the condition for the kelvin double bridge then this difference will become zero and this ratio is what we get from the wheatstone bridge so if the ratio of p upon q is equals to small p upon q then this expression is reduced to r equals to p by q s okay now in the kelvin double bridge in the starting we have made the assumption that we are choosing this second set of ratio on such that this ratio is equal okay so from this expression what we are getting that the resistance of this connecting lead will have no effect in the circuit if we have kept this ratio as equal okay now the usual expression or the usual equation actual equation for the kelvin double bridge is this now when these two ratios are not equal then we can calculate the error in the measurement of the resistance by using this expression only here the ratios are not equal so this is the additional error or uh, the additional value of the resistance which we are getting okay so we can get the error by calculating the difference between the measured value which is this minus the actual value of the unknown resistance so this was the kelvin double bridge which is used for the measurement of low resistances that like uh, for example the measurement of the resistance of the connecting lead between the unknown resistance and the standard resistance here in the kelvin double bridge because there are two sets of ratio arms so that that is why its name is double bridge and here we have the r as the resistance of the connecting lead which we want to measure so i hope that this topic measurement of low resistance using the kelvin double bridge method is clear to you thank you